There are four types of formulas commonly encountered in organic chemistry. These are molecular formula, full structural formula, displayed formula, condensed structural formula, and skeletal formula. Although it may seem like a rather long list, each of these methods of representing a compound reveals slightly different aspects and proves useful for various applications. Let's delve into molecular formula. Molecular formulas inform us about the types of atoms present in a molecule and their respective quantities. They provide details about the fundamental elements in a compound by specifying the exact number of each type of atom. Importantly, Molecular formulas do not reveal how atoms are arranged or the shape of the molecule. Their primary function is to convey the quantity of each atom. Now, let's consider acetic acid's molecular formula, which is C2H4O2, indicating that it consists of two carbon atoms, four hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms. While the molecular formula provides a count of each type of atom, it does not offer specific details about the arrangement or bonding pattern. Let's now explore the full structural formula. A displayed formula, also referred to as a full structural formula, serves as a comprehensive representation of a molecule by explicitly illustrating the arrangement of atoms and providing specific information about the number of bonds between them. In this representation, each covalent bond is denoted by a dash, with a single dash indicating a single bond two dashes representing a double bond, and three dashes symbolizing a triple bond. To ensure we draw the structure accurately, it's important to know how many bonds each element can make. For example, carbon can form up to four bonds, oxygen up to two, hydrogen up to one, and so on. This understanding is essential for ensuring the correctness of the representation. The displayed formula mentioned earlier can be unwieldy. It can be further streamlined by omitting some or all of the covalent bonds and indicating the number of identical groups attached to an atom with a subscript. This condensed and more compact representation is called a condensed structural formula, or simply a condensed formula. I have the displayed formula of butane here, which I'll use to illustrate its condensed structural formula. In condensed structural formulas, bonded atoms are grouped together. For instance, on the left side of the molecule, there's a carbon bonded to three hydrogens, forming the group CH3. Moving down the chain, let's examine the next atoms. There's a carbon with two hydrogens attached, represented as CH2. Further down, another carbon is attached to two hydrogens, depicted as CH2, followed by a carbon linked to three hydrogens, represented as CH3. This condensed structural formula for butane doesn't explicitly show bonds, but effectively conveys essential connectivity information. In condensed structural formulas, repeating groups can be efficiently represented using parentheses and a subscript number to denote the number of repeating units. For instance, in this molecule, there are two repeating CH2 groups in the middle. This can be represented by replacing CH2CH2 with CH2 enclosed in parentheses and a subscript 2 outside the parentheses, indicating the repetition. This representation conveys the same information more succinctly, occupying less space. Next, let's examine the example of acetic acid. Similarly, We'll work from left to right to assign the condensed structural formula in this molecule. Starting from the left, there is a carbon attached to three hydrogens, which we'll denote as the CH3 group. Moving on to the middle part, there is a carbon with two hydrogens attached, represented as CH2. Finally, on the right side, there's a carbon attached to two oxygen atoms, with one of the oxygen atoms further bonded to a hydrogen and this will be denoted as COO and H. Here, we're examining another molecule. This compound contains a double bond, and we will apply the same method to draw its condensed formula. In this case, we will retain the carbon-carbon double bond and depict the hydrogen atoms following each carbon to which they are bonded.
Now let's discuss the process of converting a condensed structural formula into a displayed formula. To illustrate this, we'll use an example. Starting from the left side of the molecule and reading from left to right, we observe that the molecule begins with CH3CH2 parentheses 3. This notation indicates that there are three groups of CH3CH2 attached to a central carbon atom. To begin, let's focus on the central carbon atom and draw it. Next, we'll represent the three CH3CH2 groups attached to this central carbon atom. Moving along, the central carbon atom is also connected to another carbon with two hydrogen atoms, H. We're going to draw that. Continuing with the structure, the carbon mentioned above is linked to another carbon, which in turn is connected to an H and a CH3 group within parentheses. Following the chain, there is another CH, and this CH is attached to two CH3 groups. These steps offer a systematic approach for easily transforming a condensed structural formula into a displayed formula. When studying organic chemistry, one of the major challenges students face during their transition from previous studies is the way that chemists draw structures of molecules. In earlier studies, this was typically achieved using display formulas, where all bonded atoms were explicitly shown. Unfortunately, when discussing more advanced chemistry, the structure can become quite complex, so showing all of the atoms is cumbersome and actually leads to a very confusing diagram. In more complex situations, chemists often use a skeletal formula, where the carbon chain is shown as a zigzag line. Here are some guidelines for drawing skeletal formulas. Chains of carbon atoms are depicted as zigzags, where each zigzag point indicates a carbon atom. A single line between two points represents the bond between two carbons. By counting these lines, we can determine the number of carbons in the chain. For example, the first line signifies the bond between the first and second carbons, the second line represents the bond between the second and third carbons, and so on. Hydrogen atoms that are bonded to a carbon atom are not shown. There are too many, and they clutter the diagram. Let's take examples that contains double bond and triple bond. The chain of carbon atoms are represented as zigzags, where each zigzag point indicates a carbon atom. Double bonds are represented by two lines between connecting points. The same principle applies for a molecule containing a triple bond. However, in this case, the triple bond is represented as a straight line, not a zigzag. This is the appropriate way to depict a triple bond in a skeletal formula.